Let's talk about one of the other major symptoms of folate, and I, I give it its own graphic here just because I, I, this is so common. We see that this is such a common side effect of folate, and that has to do with the anemia that folate can cause. So one of the diseases, okay, that folate creates is anemia, and this specifically it's a macrocytic anemia. Macro means large. Cytic means cell. So cytic. Macrocytic anemia means large cell anemia. And so what happens is your red blood cells, when they're born, they're very big. So let's just pretend this is a red blood cell. And folate helps the red blood cell mature. So when a red blood cell matures, it gets smaller. And it, when it continues to mature, it gets even smaller and it takes on a different shape. It trades out, the cell nucleus goes away and we get hemoglobin in it instead. And this is what a red blood cell looks like, like a little disc. And so what we get in that disc is oxygen. That's where oxygen is carried. That's also where carbon dioxide is carried. And so folate, very important for taking that very large red blood cell and helping it to mature to a properly sized red blood cell, which again um, allows us to carry oxygen. What happens if we can't do this? If we're anemic and we're not carrying oxygen because we're stuck and our red blood cells are large and basically they're large and they're clumsy, they don't carry oxygen as well, okay, is we start to develop this laundry list of symptoms here, fatigue, headaches, muscle weakness, heart palpitations, weight loss, loss of appetite, dizziness, shortness of breath, all symptoms potentially of anemia. In this case, as we talk about folate, this is one of the most common um, conditions in the U.S. today are anemias. And so a lot of people equate anemia to iron deficiency. Um, although iron deficiency can cause anemia, folate causes a different type of anemia. So kind of the takeaway here, if you're having or struggling with this series of symptoms, the fatigue, the headaches, the muscle weakness, the exercise intolerance, your heart's beating really rapidly, okay, dizziness, shortness of breath, if you go to altitude and you completely lose your ability to function, that, that may be a sign of anemia as well, then you could be folate deficient. Now, one of the tests that you can ask your doctor to run is something called MCV, mean corpuscular volume. This is a test, it's part of a standard blood test um, that helps you understand whether or not your red blood cells are too large. Okay, so if your MCV value is high, if it's too high, it's in indicating that your red blood cells are large and they're stuck in this clumsy state, and it's a potential indicator that you might have a folate deficiency. Although this could also be vitamin B12, so you have to be careful. Sometimes uh, it's folate, sometimes it's B12 that creates this type of anemia. And, uh, and so again, this is just a really inexpensive way to get a simple blood test done where if this is going on or if you have a history of, of a high MCV and your doctor never told you what it meant, this is what it means. And it might mean that you have a folate deficiency, so you might want to get it looked at. Okay, let's talk about some additional folate-related conditions here. Um, folate has a lot of different functions. And, and, you know, we mentioned earlier, we said that folate played a role in red blood cell production. Just now we said that it, folate plays a role in DNA and RNA synthesis and detoxification. And it also plays a role in neurotransmitter synthesis. But those aren't the only roles for folate. One of folate's other roles, I'm going to just circle this one because this is a big one, birth defects as well as pregnancy complications. And there's a, a term, you probably have heard this, neural tube defects. This is a major problem in the United States in an industrialized country. So NTD, neural tube defects. What is a neural tube defect? If you've ever heard of the disease spina bifida or cleft palate, these are forms of neural tube defects. When, the, when a baby is growing inside the mom, um, the, there's a part uh, of there's a formation that occurs neurologically speaking of the neural tube. So the neural tube is maturing and it's and it's properly forming. But folate deficiency will lead to 
um, DNA damage that, that contributes to these neural tube defects. So babies are born with birth defects. Again, that's what, that's what spina bifida is. And that's what cleft palate. Some children are born with their tongue ties. Okay, these could potentially be the mom having low levels of folate coming into pregnancy. It could also, folate deficiency can also cause pregnancy complications. So ladies, if you've had spontaneous abortion or if you've had you know, miscarriages, that this may also be folate. Remember, folate deficiency leads to poor ability to replicate DNA and RNA. Now, why is that important? Because why do we make new DNA and RNA? It's for cell growth. Where do we see cell growth more than any other time in life beyond our, our young bodies growing? As adults, as ladies, we see cell growth occur in that fetus, the rapidly dividing cells where we need a lot of folate to make this happen. Now, this, so again, the, the DNA and the RNA replication, which is what folate is responsible for doing, leads to, I should say, not just cell growth, but normal cell growth. Because you can get, um, there are some, some, some conditions, for example, uh, if you've ever been diagnosed with cervical neoplasia, which I don't think is on this list, but I'm going to talk about it because this is one of the really common things. Cervical neoplasia, what some doctors call intraepithelial cervical neoplasia, or CIN, um, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, right, CIN. Um, this is a form of precancer, right, of the cervix in females, and we know folate plays a role in this. So, so again, DNA and RNA growth. When DNA and RNA are not replicating properly, we can, we can enhance the ability of cells to grow abnormally. So it increases the risk for cancer of the cervix. It also increases the risk, if we're talking about cancer, of colon cancers. There's linkage to colon cancer and folate deficiency. So um, again, cancer's on this list, but uh, not specifically cervical cancer, not specifically colon cancer, but this is where that correlation is made. It's that DNA and that RNA issue. We also see infertility, as I mentioned earlier, we got neural tube defects, but infertility, meaning that low levels of folate, uh, if a woman or man has low levels of folate, remember DNA and RNA replication, how do we, how do we create a healthy sperm? Men, how do we create healthy sperm? Women, how do we create a healthy environment where the cells are replicating adequately? to host a viable pregnancy. So infertility is a, is a common association with low levels of folate. We know that folate you know, can be caused, folate deficiency, I should say, can be caused by malabsorption, which I would be very, very remiss to not talk about gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. I wanna, I wanna switch to a couple of slides because I, I wanna bring those things up. Here's what we know about people with gluten sensitivity and folate. So you can see this study, this was a multi-center trial study performed and published in 2002. What we have, you can see as the result, celiac patients showed a higher total plasma homocysteine. Remember, that's what I talked about earlier, that chemical homocysteine. So what we know is that people with celiac disease have higher homocysteine level than the general population, which is indicative of a poor vitamin status, particularly B vitamins, right? And so in, in accordance, the plasma level of folate and vitamin B6, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, okay, were low. Now, 37% of the people in this research study, 37% were low in folate, okay? So this was a multi-center study, okay, where 37% of the individuals were low in folate with gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. Now, this is another study published in the German Nutrition, or Journal of Human Nutrition and Dietetics in 2013. This study showed that you can see here more than one in 10 of both newly diagnosed and experienced women had inadequate thiamine, which is B1, and then you got folate. So it's not just folate, okay? Vitamin A, magnesium, calcium, and iron intake. So again, that folate level being low in individuals with gluten sensitivity um, and celiac disease. And then we have another research study. This one was published in the journal Nutrients where you can see 20% of the people in this research study Okay, and patients in this study were deficient in folate. So one study showed 37%, another study showed 20%. So bottom line, it's not an uncommon thing to see people with gluten-induced malabsorption. The gluten causes malabsorption, 
And that can lead to, again, a nutritional deficiency. In this case, we're referring to or we're talking about folate specifically. So again, um, if you've got a history of gluten sensitivity, you're more likely to have a folate deficiency. And that, I think, is, is super important to understand because if you haven't had your levels checked, if you haven't had your doctor check your levels, then, um, then you, you probably ought to. It might not be a bad idea. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.